you know, we, we painted uh, the trim of the bookstore to make it look like it is. We uh -huh. took out signs and changed everything. Uh, and, you know, we made our island books, uh, but it, very much like it is described in the novel. Uh, but it, it was, I think, I, I mean, I really appreciate these booksellers and I think it was somewhat mind blowing for them to come back once we had changed their store and see this thing. <laughs> There's something kind of heroic about being a bookseller. There's also something heroic about adopting a child. Thank you, Amelia. My friends call me Amy. Summer list time. What is that book? Which book? On the table behind you. If you ever come down to Providence, I'll show you. This isn't like a date, is it? I'm teasing. Hans, how, how hey. are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining me. I, I love your background. <laughs> is that is that a map in a back or uh, like a? That's actually in the movie. I knew it looked familiar from somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> was that yours and you put it in the movie, or you took it from the set? How, how does that work? <laughs> no, we uh, we actually had a commission an artist to you know make one of these uh, small town maps uh, uh -huh. because there there was a sign. That was, of course, for the town we shot in. But uh, we yeah. wanted to have that small New England town feeling, so we commissioned artists to make one of these types of uh, maps. So, of course, I, I get to take whatever props home I want, so I took that one. That's a nice one. It looks great on <laughs> your back wall. I love that. I'm like, yeah, it kind of looked familiar because the film has a lot of these sort of maps and, and you know, it's certain – times it kind of stops to it and pivots you know and you see these the outline of the town because it's such a small like in the film it feels like such a it's not only a small town but such a cohesive town you know like it, it's like an old old world old school where everyone knows each other where there's one shop for everything gives you that sort of uh you know feeling of family all over ah uh, thank you that i mean that was one of the things that i loved about the story originally and that we tried to do in making the film is get that feeling that you know we <clears throat> we actually uh when we even cast uh background players we had some of the same people that would pop up in the chief choice books club or you know uh or in the short storytelling so that you get familiar with the faces and start to know that this is a town of people that you see and you see as you grow up so yeah it's kind of like a, it's a it's a cool touch especially in today's world with digital and technology you know that there's a town you know people by name coming into your bookstore you know it's got that that home feeling to it uh and, and it's that was noticeable too in a film but definitely portrayed well thank you i appreciate it that was uh it was a priority for us because you know i i wanted to make a film that was uh that felt like its own world and also was you know about people that are that form a community a community is an important part of that story to me like the bookstore is an important part of the community and seeing that island that that has the bookstore at the heart of it that was important i just love the fact of a bookstore still being around and you know and not being kindle or any any <laughs> things like that all digital there's something i'm a bookstore lover and stuff like i like going to the libraries it's just, it's a, like an escape i don't know i feel like it's a relaxation where you don't have to focus on things you're around books or magazines and you just kind of chill out and relax and everything else it, it's like a hideaway in a sense it still gives me that feeling whenever i go and i try to make time to do that uh, every so often I, I mean, it was a wonderful thing to make a movie in a bookstore because we shot at a place called Parnassus Book Service uh, in Yarmouth, uh -huh. Port. Um, and and to, all, you know, all of our cast are really passionate about their work. And, you know, they met with booksellers or bookselling reps like this. This was uh, it was great to be part of a world where I, I mean, frankly, anybody who is selling books. I, I just don't think that there are bad guys in that scenario. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yes. it, this is a this is a good thing on on all, pretty much any level. To sell books, to live a life of books, is a positive and wonderful thing for the world. So to make a movie in it and to be immersed in that world for, uh, you know, for a year of making this film, uh, and to be immersed in that world of those people, it, it really was a privilege.
Yeah, I feel like you live a life of kind of like common zen if you're a bookstore owner or like every day if that's part of your life, you know, there's just something about it that's different. You know, it's not the hustle and bustle of, of our daily lives of deadlines and emails, you know, just sort of, it's a perfect retirement activity, I would believe. And that's why I love David's character at the end. It's like, yo, I'm just getting a bookstore and relaxing, you know, from there on. <laughs> I think I think it's uh, probably less stress than uh, his previous day job. So, <laughs> right, that's exactly. But but oh, I also would say, you know, in in having worked with these people, I know that uh, it's not a simple thing to run a bookstore either. Like they work really hard, but I think they mm -hmm. do that in service of a place that feels, you know, calm and relaxed and like all about learning and uh, the things that we read books for. You know, absolutely. Uh, you know, you've worked with Gabrielle and almost everything you've done. It's been a while, Hans. Where have you been for the past decade? You should be making more <laughs> stuff, I feel like. You know, I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, tell me your relationship with her. You guys have worked previously on different projects together. Uh, is this like a partnership? Is this a, a, you know, a contract that you guys have that you must work together? How does this work? Well, I mean, I just think she's the best writer that I've ever encountered and worked with. I met her... Uh, she was in college and I had just graduated from that college. So uh, mm. I always have to say that because she is, you know, eight years younger than me. So um, <laughs> although we have been colleagues over time, uh, she, you know, I when I met her, she had uh, written some plays. I, I uh, you know, cast her in a, a thing that I was uh, doing at the college. And so I, I just, you know, she's such a fantastic writer. I have had her uh, collaborated with her on all of the scripts that I've done. And, uh, you know, that I, when you find somebody that's that good at both writing novels and screenplays, and in this case, uh, oh, there, there it is. Uh, in this yeah. case, both, you know, uh, you, you want to hold on to that talent. And, and the more that you work with someone, the more uh, of a shared vocabulary that you have and the more that you can kind of tell stories together well. I, I mean, to that point, uh, the DP who shot this uh, mm -hmm. actually shot uh, what was one of the camera operators on my first film. So Wow. That's going back. I like that. That you bring back kind of the people you started with, you know, and that understand that shorthand nature, I'm sure on set helps out a lot, you know, knowing each other's work and being familiar that eliminates a lot of potential issues. Then, you know, when you get on a set where just everyone's working for the first time or just kind of thrown in there. So that's, that's a good aspect to make work easier. You know, Absolutely. it's interesting here too, that like, not only you have the, not often do you have the author of a book being also the screenwriter. Uh, that's, that's a luxury in a sense. I have the exact source, not as a consultant, literally writing that script. Uh, what's your conversation with Gabrielle? Was this easy to her to put it into like screenplay form? As you mentioned, she's great at both of them and attesting to the movie it, it's great it's fantastically written um did she have any challenges kind of trying to include many of the details that you might not have in a book i, I wonder about that because that's such a fascinating element you know being uh you know as they always say the book is always so much that you can't put in a movie due to time constraints and all that but how did she navigate those waters in a sense of you know having that book vision and bringing it to life and including all the things she wanted to in a sense in the movie version well she uh again, has written the other screenplays that I've done, and she's very mm -hmm. adept at this. She's also, you know, in, in my experience, and, you know, I've produced for other directors, which was part of what I was doing in those 10 years, uh, including, right. like, you know, making this crazy Jackie Chan movie that I uh, produced in China. Like, you know, I've, so I've worked with a lot of writers, <clears throat> and um, she's remarkably not precious about her own work when she's adapting it. So, you know, mm -hmm. you have to tell the story in the medium that you're working in. And I think, uh, I, in a way, I mean, I think that, uh, I don't think she found it difficult because of that freedom, because of her ability to understand the difference between screen storytelling and novels. Uh, one of the things that I loved about what she did with this script, and it determines the way that we even shot it, is that the story is told from the point of view of all these characters. When I mentioned that word community, that's mm -hmm. also a driving force of the storytelling. Like, yeah. As you know, in the movie, the kind of central mystery is told twice from two different points of view. And uh, we use the camera to stay in the points of view of multiple characters. You know, nothing in this movie is in your face in style. Like, you know, my first film was a split screen movie the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, and 
that's a bit in your face in terms of style, but uh, you know, in this, everything is uh, a little more subtle and in service of the story. But, you know, if you watch the film with that eye towards what is happening with the cinematography, every scene is told through a specific character's point of view. Yeah. Like even the beginning of the movie, Amelia is the point of view and she starts the movie out and brings us all the way to her first meeting with AJ. And then there's a handoff and then it's AJ's film for 20 minutes. You know, I loved that Gabrielle's script had the sophistication of telling the story from different points of view to the point that it pays off in the solution of the mystery in another character's point of view. So, yeah, I love that. It, you know, we know that Lucy and Kunal's character are kind of the leads, but everyone matters here. And that's the thing. It's so cool that all the, the supporting actors, they all have their own story arcs and, and their own things that eventually tie in, which is amazing writing to tie everything in together and how it builds up to it. It's incredible. If you watch the first half of a movie, it's almost a different movie than what it ends up being because of all the connections coming together. But uh, that's difficult too. I'd imagine as a writer uh, to just have so much, you know, in, in a, our, you know, 45 movie or whatnot to, to give so much shine to so many characters and actors in that way too, that they all matter without taking one of them out of it. It makes the movie and story completely different too, yeah. which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I think she, I think the screenplay is incredible. And to that point, because she has this beautiful, uh, you know, gift for making all the characters real and letting them tell their stories. I mean, we, have a wonderful cast who I believe are all fantastic in the movie uh, and bring great humanity. And, you know, obviously there is one character, uh, I don't know if I should not spoil it, but one character who could be seen as the villain um, and does yeah. some bad <laughs> things. But I love that he, in that moment, let's say of the car crash, gets his own story, his own point of view and a moment of grace, mm -hmm. uh, even though he's kind of the villain, you know? Right. No, that's well said. That, that's uh, that's how I, I kind of thought about that, too. You know, when, when you see that point, because everyone's everyone gets to tell their story in a sense, at least partially or, or a version of it. You know, you don't have that. Well, we don't know what he was thinking. Even that character that you're speaking of had his moments, too, to, to kind yeah. of share. I love that about it. I thought it was just brilliant all the way around. You know, I spoke to, to Lucy and Kunal last week and I told Lucy, like, there's now, I think, certainties in life, like death taxes and Lucy finding love in a film. She's so good. I think she's like the modern Julia Roberts in a sense about <laughs> you see a love story and you envision her in it. And Kunal agreed completely, too. That, um, I could imagine she was like probably a magnet wanting to cast her because she knows how to show this humanity and vulnerability and, and the romance kind of of you know, of, of what people want in life. She does such a good job of relaying that on screen. Uh, was that a first choice selection for you and Gabrielle? Because I, I think you got the perfect person and, and really all around in a cast, but especially Lucy in that role. I thought it was perfect. Oh, absolutely. I mean, she, uh, you know, she, I, I think that this is her best work on film. You know, of course I would, because uh, I, I had a wonderful experience working with both of them. They, they mm -hmm. were, we, like all independent films, we had a very short time to shoot this in. We had 21 days. Wow, uh, and, three weeks to shoot all that. That's crazy. Well, you know, and we had uh, over 170 scenes and, uh, you know, a lot of locations and a story that takes place over 13 years. So to tell all of that in 21 days, you know, it, it's a remarkable challenge. But, you know, I, I always, I mean, I love actors. I did theater before I did film. I, I one of the reasons I do this is to work with them mm -hmm. uh, to have the responsibility that they have to shoot you know that much of a story and to go the places they went in that amount of time i i can't say enough good about these actors they're so good yeah the chemistry was just great you know and and it's it's kind of funny because a lot of them are tied in by the scream movies too <laughs> if you look at the timeline <laughs> that is true yeah that is scream true. <laughs> three or four yeah 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 david and and uh yeah, Lucy, and it just like everyone kind and, of comes and Scott, Scott, and Scott was in yeah, Scott was in Screen Forward. They, it's, yeah. it's crazy how they all kind of come together, but I just love the the yeah the different types of actors are here and used in so many great ways. I just thought it was just great casting all around, really. 
um, and that thing. And you know, another character I can't admit here is the town itself. That is a major character in this film because I'm going to ask you now, how did you find this town exactly? And because it, it had the charm of what you'd imagine in a book and, and this coming to life, it's, it's like an isolated town that's it's a hidden gem in a sense when you're watching like wow i'd like to be in this place or visit it at least tell me about the scouting for that because that's a character in a film for sure I, i'm really glad that you said that because uh that is what we wanted we wanted to build an alice island that you want to go to um mm -hmm. and you know there was not one time i mean part, by the way part of the reason i'm wearing this this is a cape cod hat that i bought uh -huh. when we were shooting uh we we shot you know on Nantucket, which is one of the islands like Ellis Island, uh, mm -hmm. but mostly in Cape Cod, Hyannis, uh, Yarmouth Port, uh, and uh, Hyannis Port, like we shot in the Cape. Uh, and I, wow. I was born in Massachusetts and some of my childhood, I grew up in Massachusetts, of course, went back there for school. I keep coming back to Massachusetts. It's so, drawing you back, that's why. You it, can't get away does. from it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and when Gabrielle wrote this novel, uh, you know, I, really thought this is the story I have to tell. Like, you know, I, I can only direct something if it comes from my heart. And I, I loved this place and these characters and I wanted to build a world that, you know, they would want to live in uh, and that people would want to come to. That's it's well said because I felt that watching it. And you know, another character I'd say in the movie is the bookstore, the house itself. You know, the the purple stands out so much the color of that, it just it just hits you, you know, in, in so many ways. You know what this is. But the the structure of it is like an old kind of you know, a seaside town, how, you know, a home too. I, I love this kind of like an old, uh, you know, probably like early 1900s home, but it's got that vibrant look because of the purple. Tell me about finding that location to to be the bookstore because that's another character in this film is how it stands out it was it was absolutely key to find the bookstore you know it, and it mm -hmm. is a character and again it's a bookstore and a home <laughs> too it, it's not yes. just a store exactly. it, it, you can tell it's, it's it's got life in it and people live there you know too exactly and you know again not to spoil too much but that bookstore survives through the entire movie um so you know it it, it is the character that is at the end of the movie as well. So get, getting that right was essential. In the book, uh, in the novel, it says that it is painted purple. And so having that you know purple trim was essential to me, but you don't find a lot of bookstores with purple trim out in the world. So you know we, uh, we scouted many, many bookstores all around the Cape. Uh, and you know, it's also, uh, we had to find somebody that was a bookseller who was nice enough to let us close their shop down for, uh, you know, three weeks yeah. of pre prepping it, shooting it, and then restoring it to what it used to be. So, you know, we we painted uh, the trim of the bookstore to make it look like it is. We uh -huh. took out signs and changed everything. Uh, and, you know, we made our island books, uh, but it, very much like it is described in the novel. Uh, but it, it was, I think, I, I mean, I really appreciate these booksellers and I think it was somewhat mind blowing for them to come back once we had changed their store and see this thing. Uh, yeah. and then, and, and then somewhat mind blowing when we restored it, you know, they came back and like, we painted it back the way it was, brought everything back to the way it was. And suddenly they had their bookstore back, so. Wow, and you know, it's another amazing thing. It's like, there's one thing to create a set and build a bookstore, but it's a real life bookstore. There's something about that element that that's just, you can't recreate, right? Having the actual books in there, not having to bring in some fake stuff or, you know, build a set, that, that's amazing. Did you always want that to have a real bookstore and not have to create one, uh, you know, makeshift one basically? Well, we, I mean, we considered building a set, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I've shot movies uh, on sound stages uh, and I've shot location, uh, but I, I felt like in this case, location was the only way to go because this had to feel like a real place. And uh, I, I wanted a bookstore that was a mix of new and used books because again, this is a story that has a, a kind of deeply nostalgic pull of a time where bookstores, you know, I think, you know, of course they're struggling to survive in today's world of Kindle and, you know, everything being digital. I think that it's worth making movies about them and, and trying to preserve them, but to get that feeling of, you know, a place that's lived in and books that have been read and touched, you know, I think was essential. And, you know, I, while we were shooting, one of the, 
I mean, it's so crazy, as you know, you have these long days and you have such a short amount of time to do it. And yet there are times where various people on set, probably not the director and Gabrielle, who was a very on set on hands producer, we never had a chance to do this because we were so busy. But there are little moments where various crew members are waiting while you are rolling the camera or whatever. And I would come around the corner in the bookstore and discover somebody reading a book. Uh, that's what, that's what it's all about. Like that's, <laughs> you know, that's what we want people to do at the end of the movie when the last line is, ha have I got a book for you? That's yeah. what I, I want. I want people to buy these books, you know, to buy physical books, hold books in their hand for uh, to the end of time, if they can. That's so. amazing because like, we're so conditioned to be just being on the phone and searching stuff. So for <laughs> someone to put the phone away, grab a book, that is an amazing influence that movie made on them just being there on set. That, that, that says yeah. a lot from that. Yeah. yeah. What a cool, <laughs> what a cool, well, I hope that was like a bonus feature. Someone got that on camera. You know? <laughs> I, I did actually, I, I took a picture of, you know, the DP, is always super busy. This is another person that barely has any time. So yeah. when I caught him one time looking at a book, I did shoot that. I, I oh, got it on film. Or I got it digitally. You know. <laughs> it's a great get either way. That's yeah. <laughs> just the story itself. It, it's pretty inspiring to see like the, the story uh, of this character, AJ, you know, who goes through so many downs, but there's like, it, it's a metaphor in life that things can always get better and happen for you, you no know, matter how bad and bleak things are, you know, if you have a passion for something and you keep on giving life a chance, like there's a lot of great things that can come to you. I, I love the message of the film too, that, you know, and it applies in everyday life and it's, it's timeless thing about humans, you know, that um, there's not always bad times don't last forever. And, you know, even, there's peaks and valleys of life and maybe it doesn't end up great, but the impact you can make and, and how life can turn. It's like, you can still find love. You can still find, you know, a purpose to life. I, I love the message of this movie. Uh, thank you. I, I mean, it's why I wanted to make it because, you mm -hmm. know, when we see AJ at the beginning, he is at the lowest point in his life. Everything's yeah. gone and everything's taken away from him. And yet we see a beautiful redemption that he gets through the story that we, we tell. And, uh, you know, I, I like movies that make you feel, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I know that uh, sometimes, uh, you know, people think that um, a lot of artists want to reflect how difficult our world is and how, uh, you know, the, the challenges that face us. And that's totally legitimate. That's cool. But I also think that there is an important part of art, which is looking at the good parts of life and humanity and saying, yeah, you can find love and you can find you know, friendship, you can find, for that matter, a book, you know, and these are only good things that make our life better. And that that's what I wanted to tell in making this movie. And sometimes the simplest way too. you know, it doesn't have to be extravagant or, or, or <laughs> anything. It just it, people connect. I love how these characters connect through books, you know, it's just like that share commonality. It's not like you have to swipe and all that. It's just like that natural kind of a real human connection. I thought this film, it, film had so much humanity to it. And that's an important thing because it's, it's a lot about the characters. It really is about them, but their bonds and how, you know, things, the books, are a symbolism of things that in common and things that are deeper in life than just surface level things, you know, in so many ways, how everyone was affected by these books in some way, you know, that it connected them, which is amazing um, to know that it doesn't, it necessarily could be different things in life, but there are things that can still make us connect, you know, and uh, it's good to communicate too. It's a communication, you know, in a day and age that we don't see much of it. Um, yeah, I shed a few tears for sure. And I, I love stories like that because it makes you feel, you know, and, and when you come out of a movie smiling or you have a various range of emotions, you know, that means it hits you. Unlike, so we get enough superhero stuff. You know I mean, it's good for the brain. It just kind of bombards your brain with like action stuff. But when a movie makes you feel and kind of think about life too and certain things, um, I'd imagine as a filmmaker, it's it's gratifying, rewarding too to be part of that. It really is. Um, you know, as you were saying, these people bond over books and, uh, you know, David Arquette's character, uh, Lambiasi, starts out the movie saying, you know, I'm I'm not much of a reader. Right. And by the end, when he's in a date, the way that he makes that connection is saying what kind of books he reads and asking her, what do you read? And uh, that 
to me is a story worth telling about somebody who discovers how special it is and what books can do inside of our lives, you know? Um, and, uh, you know, for that matter, a- another, another character that I love is Maya. You know, we have this, mm-hmm. the, the baby that is discovered in the bookstore. Right. We see her become a writer. You know, this is the, also the coming of age of a young woman who becomes nice. a writer. So she is a storyteller. Like everyone gets to tell their stories. She actually becomes someone who writes books. Yeah, and you see the kind of the ebbs and flows of her journey too, and especially that that uh, competition where it doesn't go her way. It's just like it's part of life, you know. What I mean, that the growth and the maturation and the things not going right, but it still keeps you per, per you know going forward and, and doing more. And you see the support from age. It's just amazing how so many things tie in this movie. I loved how, like I said, it, it must have been it's it's genius writing to to connect so many dots, you know, from so many ends and. Uh, I think you did a terrific, everyone did a terrific job, the cinematography, the DP, because it all looks great, you know, and the story says it's all with, with, and the actors relay it, you know, like Vessel. So uh, I don't know how you're going to top this, Hans. This is a heck of a movie. I don't know what's next for you, anything on the agenda, but if you can tell stories like this, that would be pretty, pretty good, good way to go. Well, thank you. You, you know, I, I do have another script that Gabrielle wrote that uh, we're Very probably good. going to shoot next year. But uh, I, I do, I, I mean, I agree with you. I can't say enough about how brilliantly this script was written. And, and I'm just fortunate that, uh, again, I have this collaboration with Gabrielle over time and she let me direct it. You know, when the book first came out, it was a New York Times bestseller. So a lot of producers would ask us, um, you know, uh, to make the film. And the first question they would always ask is, who's going to play AJ? And then they'd say, Benedict Cumberbatch or, you know, Seth Rogen or whatever. And I, it struck me that at the time, because this originally was written in 2014, mm-hmm. every person that was suggested was not of Indian descent. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons we didn't make it until now, and this is the next movie I wanted to make, was because we couldn't make it with the person that was written to be in it. Um, Mm -hmm. And so fortunately, the world has been changing. And, uh, you know, Hollywood really wants to now make stories that are accurate to the people that, uh, that are supposed to be in movies. And so the moment that we found a producer who, rather than saying, who do you want to be in it? And then suggesting, by the way, wonderful actors. I love those guys. Sure, yeah, yeah. great, Great to work with them someday. But when I when they said who do you want to be in it and didn't suggest and I said this name, they said yes. And so uh, you know, making it with Kunal, who I think is really one of the best actors, and I think we'll see that as his career continues and grows. Like he uh, he gives an incredible performance. I think. Absolutely. You know, for people who watched it on Big Bang Theory, it's like it's a whole different side of him too. the the, the dramatic, you know, the more serious. And the funny thing I asked him, and it's kind of I asked him, how many takes did it take? I love that scene in the beginning where he's angry. He just like knocks the food and goes flying across the room, hits the fireplace. I'm like, how many takes did it take? Because that was marvelously done, almost like it was like CGI, like how you just swipe it and went flying. (laughs) Was one take or was it? It, 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 we had only two takes because once uh-huh. you do that, you have to clean the whole wall, right. you know. I so, uh, and and we only had one camera on set, so we we shot it from two different angles, and that was the two takes. But, I, I uh, thought it was a very good, like you know where this character's at at this point. It's a very good <laughs> illustrating scene, you know, like how you just swiped it like Thor and it went flying. I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. And, I mean, he he got it take one as well. Like he he again praising his incredible talent like he's so technically precise that you know i asked i said here's where we want it on the wall and he looked at it he thought took him about 30 seconds and he hit it both times mark of a great actor physically too you know the physicality (laughs) emotionally everything uh hans i i really enjoyed this film i thought it was tremendous all the way around i I hope you bring these people back for the next thing you and gab work together that'd be great to have at least some of these actors in your projects going forward and i certainly hope you 
you keep on producing, but he also directs some stuff too, because uh, this was really well done all around. I mean, a team effort. It seems like it's a very ensemble movie you're watching, but it seems like behind the scenes it was that way too, that everyone played a big portion to making this what it was, and it came out great. Absolutely. Everybody who worked on this, you know, it, it's uh, not a not a Marvel film. There's not a big budget. So everybody who worked on the movie did it because they loved the story and they wanted to tell the story. And, uh, you know, I, I think all the actors are amazing. And like you said, I want to work with them again. Like, as we talked about in my collaboration with Gabrielle over time, you know, the shared vocabulary that we built of creating these great characters, I'd love to take that into another film. I, th I would like to work with all of them if I could. Well, mention to her maybe like an AJ kind of prequel or something. Let's do more of these because I think we, it, there's only good to have movies like this. I think uh, we need movies like this, uh, and I'm glad they're they're being made. So uh, fantastic work again. I I'm thankful that you had the time to to talk to me about it, and uh, I'll spread the word on my end. Ah, thank you. It was great meeting you and talking to you about the movie. Thank you so much, Hans. Looking forward to the next one. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.